I've always regarded myself as a straightforward person. I don't like my feelings and my thoughts to be dismissed or taken lightly. I believe I'm somebody that counts. And what I wouldn't do to you, I don't want you to do it to me. And if you do it to me, I'm a remember, you, you must remember you did that. Don't forget. I'm going to remind you all day. And I noticed he wasn't listening. I loved him so, but he wasn't listening. When he heard I had become a Christian, oh, I was as good as dead. When my dad found out that I had become a Christian, it was over. It was war. I mean, I was called all kinds of names. Amazing. But behind my back, he would boast and brag to all his friends. They told me how proud he was. You know, she knows her Bible like the back of her hand. She's a preacher. That's my daughter. And I'm like, I don't get what's going on. You know, I, I was so confused. When I came to the Caribbean five times, he kept taking me away from the Christians and putting me in his house. And you need to know who you are. You don't know who you are. We're Jewish. This is not going to work. They will never receive you. They will never understand you. So when I had my church, what I did, I've always been a firm believer in the Torah anyway. You know, I, I listened and I studied and I qualified and I gave the white people what they wanted to know on the faith that they get the certificate. Basically, it didn't mean I believed it. I've never believed that God is all, uh, I don't want to use the wrong word and hurt nobody, but I've never believed he's in different parts. I've always believed because of Exodus, he says, Hear, O Israel. The Lord thy God is one God. Okay. So this was the confusion in the church for 26 years. I battled with bishops. I battled with everybody around me. This struggle went on until one day I came home from a nice high revival service. I mean, I don't know how many of you in here have ever been or even seen on TV those really charismatic, very high, you know, piped up services that we have. And I came home soaking wet and I was in my room and I heard a voice say, you should not be worshipping Jesus like that. Now, here is where we thought we needed a shrink. Because I know I was in that room by myself. <laughs> You know, my babies couldn't talk at that time. I froze. Because I wanted to say, who's that? But in my spirit, I guess I knew who that was. Or, or a representative of who I thought it was. I thought about it. I have 400 people in my membership. And not counting visitors. I said, okay, I went to church the following week, and I took note at the service itself, how we did the service, what songs were being sung, what scriptures were being read, how we were in church, what we were actually ministering to the people, and I said, good Lord, they are actually worshiping Jesus, because the songs were to Jesus, and about Jesus, and very few of the songs were really about God, even though we say we believed in God. You know, I left it as a, a correction and a rebuke that had come to me. And I wondered how many other pastors, reverends, and bishops have actually heard such a thing and probably dismissed it. So I didn't want to be the first one to appear defiant. It was bad enough I was a woman. So I went to my day job. I was working for uh, immigration NAS services. I was actually... Uh, processing and sorting out the um, the medical needs of a lot of uh, Muslims coming into England. And uh, they couldn't stop what I was doing, but they didn't like it. Because I understood, because I grew up with Muslims in England, England is a Muslim country. That's all I've got to say. Those of you who've been there, you'll find that there are more Muslims there than anything else now. We entertain Islam. But we don't understand Islam. Well, I do now, but I didn't then. And uh, 
what I was doing was, what they said, I was showing favor to the Muslims. But I wasn't. I was just respecting their religious beliefs. I understood the separation rule. And the men wanted to be on one floor, and the women wanted to be on another floor, and they didn't want the same escalator, and they didn't want to go up in the wheelchairs on the same side, and they wanted to wear their coverings, and they were like, we don't care, they've come here, and they're in England now, we can't do this. But I broke every rule, and gave them what they wanted, and became popular among the Muslim community. So all of a sudden, I was doused with all these gifts, and uh, invitations to nice curry dinners, and we became friends. You know, in a nutshell, I mean, I've never met a, 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 an unfriendly Muslim in England. So I was at work one day, and a Muslim girl who sat on the desk over that side, she came and she said to me, Sister, Allah told me to give you this. I said, Allah? Allah told you? You see, because in England, when you say Allah, now you're talking about the big guy. We don't say Allah in England for a joke. It's not the name that we play. We'd rather muck around with Jesus. We are not playing with Allah. <laughs> you know, you say Allah and the whole thing changes. People get scared. People go the other way. When she said, Allah told me to give you this. I said, Allah. She said, yes, ma'am. And she kept doing this. She kept, she kept doing this and backing off, pushing the book to me. It was a brown book, it was called the Sunnah of the Prophets. The Sunnah of the Prophet. I said, why would Allah tell you to give me this and I need a new Bible? She said, I don't know, I'm just, I just do what I was told. I took the book home, I'm trying to condense this. Help me to I took the book home, I read it through, I'm a bookworm. I read everything, everything. When I read this book, I said, what manner of madness is this? A man is dying, and we're having a punch up around his bedside. We don't want to give him paper so he can write his final will and testament. What is this? What is this? I start reading, I, I said, what, what on earth is this? This is not how you treat the dying, hold on. Because I didn't even realize how great Muhammad really was. All I knew, that his name,